So I'm back onto the um, larger piece of fabric for the big blind now. And the next thing I want to do is to crease a line in um, at the very, where the blind is going to finish at the base. And that will be 10 centimetres from the bottom because that's what you allowed for the seam allowance. And you may even still have your pin line in along that line that was 10 centimetres above the cup. So turn your fabric over. Make sure you have got the bottom of the blind and not the top. You'll have the cross pins at the top. And then fold that in the 10 centimetres. Make sure it's exact all the way along. You might want to pin it as you go along to keep it in position. And then you're going to press that in with some steam all the way along. Keep that nice and true. You can take your pins out. Now open it up and you'll have a nice crease line in there. Smooth out the rest of your fabric, set like nice and flat on the table. And then you're going to position your interlining. next thing to do is to press in another crease at two inches or five centimeters because this is going to be the eventually the turned hem and we want the interlining to just go up into that first crease I'm just going to press it again five centimeters two inches from the base so the edge of the fabric is just going up to that first crease line so in other words, I've got a two by two inch folded hem now at the bottom of my fabric. And I'm going to open it out, I'm going to get my, my interlining and I'm going to put it up to that first crease from the base. Make sure you've got your interlining the right way around. It's this way. And because you cut the straight edge from the edge of the table, it should be a nice straight cut. This fabric is quite moving, so I want to get it nice and flat on the table as I do this. Now I'm going to put my interlining up to that first crease, the edge of the interlining. And I'm going to smooth it out all the way up. That's so very flat on the fabric. It's coming up to the edges. It's quite useful actually if you've got a, a long wall or a, even a short ruler to just smooth it out like this. Just gets it nice and flat. You feel I've got, oh, that's the pen I've got in the centre, I'll get that out later. So everything's nice and flat. That's going to go up to that first crease line, like that. Just fold your fabric over and make sure it's not uh, too proud. It's all in there. I'm just going to put some pins across the base of this interlining now, just above the hem, just to stop it from moving really. Because the first thing I'm going to do is to lock stitch that in place. We don't want it to, to move. So we're gonna lock stitching is something we use in curtain making and blind making. It's all done by hand and it just fixes things in and stops them from dropping. So when you've got interlining and it's down the edge of the curtain. It's actually lock stitched right onto the crease so that nothing, the interlining can't drop and you'll get a sort of not very nice edge. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So for this sort of work you need to use a long darner needle. They're about five centimetres long and quite fine um, and extra strong thread. 
this is um, coats um, it's like a coated thread that is uh, you can't break it and it won't rot uh, when sunlight gets to it which often is what happens when something's at a window I need quite a lot of thread so I'm just going to take off quite a long piece it's quite a large stitch this and the first thing I'm going to do is just to uh, lock it on to the edge of the fabric and I can just tie that on I can just do a knot onto the either onto the fabric or the interlining I'm just doing it on the interlining with a double knot like that and then you're going to take you're going to come down about um, maybe five centimeters or bit less maybe and you're just going to take a thread from the material it's in the crease and then you're going to come up onto the interlining and you're going to leave the cotton over here because you're going to go through the loop so it looks like that so it's not a tight stitch all it's doing is going to hold that edge of that interlining against the base of the blind and it's quite, it's got a little bit of movement. And especially when we go down the edges, we kind of want it to have movement because you don't want it to pull and create like a pucker. So it really is quite a, a loose stitch. And quite a big stitch. You don't need to do it too small. Like I say, five centimetres is uh, it's not a problem. I'm going to do it all the way along the base. So it uses the cotton up quite quickly, which is why I may have had quite a lot of cotton. Only you ever use single threads, not double. You can you can just use normal threads. You don't have to use extra strong thread. Um, I do that because obviously I want them to last a long time. Uh, cotton, normal polyester cotton will rot over time if it's left at a sunny window, and eventually stitching might come undone. But so it's just, but it is more expensive to buy. So, so I've lock stitched in this bottom edge here, and now I'm going to fold in the two sides. Now I'm going to fold in one side first. I've got a pin here that I know is the uh, correct measurement from the centre, and it's six centimetres from the edge because I just left the salvage on, and it was quite near to the um, measurement of the width of fabric anyway. So I'm just going to pin it at six all the way down but it would be five is the normal seam allowance and you're going to press that in again with some steam and we're going to trim away the uh, interlining here we don't want the interlining to be folded over in the sides of the blind because it's too thick for it to feet up so I'm going to crease that in all the way along And take the pins out, peel back just the fabric and you will see when you peel back the interlining that you've got a nice crease line and that is what you're going to cut along. So I'm going to cut off that spare interlining that's going into the fold, I don't want that. And then we're going to lock stitch down this whole edge, just like we did along the bottom. just to hold it into that uh, fold. I might just pin my interlining to stop it from moving now all the way along this edge while I lock stitch it. So I'm going to lock stitch that. And then once I've done that, I'm just going to fold that over and put the pins in. And then I will measure from here across to get the finished width of the blind don't just fold the other side in the five or six centimeters and assume it's right you need to get this width very exact and sometimes the fold just takes up half you know a couple of millimeters you just want to get the finish width of the blind perfect so always do this side first and then re-measure for getting the width of your blind so i've lock stitched the interlining in place and i've folded over that edge and i've put pins all along that edge now. Now I'm going to measure across 
my uh, measurements. So what I'm doing, I'm going to measure across from that edge to the finished width of the blind, which is going to be 129. I'm just going to pin in. And then I'm just going to fold the fabric so that it measures 129 when it's folded over. So that's it there. But you could just put a pin line across first. That might be a bit easier. Pin line in at 129. But you still need to check when you fold it, just in case um, it's taking up the... Uh, a bit extra. Again we need to press this fold in and then trim the um, interlining away. Sometimes just by folding it with your hands and giving it a crease you can get a crease in the interlining which is probably safer to do it with the iron because you'll get a much better. Now I've just folded that over on that pin line and I'm now just going to check that it measures 129 all the way up. And I'm just going to put some pins in while I press it. I'm going to measure it at every point, making sure that it's exactly 129. Roman blinds are all about accuracy um, all the way through, really, because otherwise they won't look perfect at your window, they won't pleat up perfectly. Got to just keep measuring. It needs to come in just a fraction there. And one more at the top. That's good. So I'm going to press that in now. Might want to take those pins out from inside. Wherever they are. It's best if you can move your iron about rather than keep taking this over to the ironing board just because it's good to keep it all flat on the table all the time you're working on it because then the measurements will stay correct. Nothing can move but you know do have a long enough extension to be able to do it. And then you move your ironing board near to the table that you're working on. So now again I'm going to take the pins out, trim away that interlining and then I'm going to lock stitch down that edge again. When you're lock stitching this way you're going to be putting your cotton into the interlining first so it's kind of the opposite way round to when you're along the hem, it just depends which way you're going. So you're going into the interlining, picking up a thread, keeping the loop to the left hand side and going down the fold. So remember when you're on the fabric side, you're just picking up a thread. When you're on the interlining side, it doesn't matter that's not going to show. So keep your cotton over this side, into the interlining, pick up a thread of the fabric and just pull it so that loop forms. Nice loose stitch, don't pull it too tight. Don't let the thread go double. All the way down. So with uh, lock stitching you always work from top to bottom. I'm just going to fold some up there. And I'm going to fold that back and I'm going to use those pins to just secure it. Now 
then I will just go back and check again that it measures one to one. I won't be really sure about this. Yep, perfect. Just drop them down there. Place. Just going to keep checking. One two nine. One two nine. Yeah, I'm all good. The next thing to do is to press in the hem uh, ready for when you're going to put the lining in. So um, at the corner here, you just want to bring that over a little bit so it doesn't sit proud at the edge and just fold it, fold it again. Find that original crease line and just put that pin in to hold that like that. Let's just get a bit further along. So what I mean is you don't want this edge to be sitting outside when you're looking from the front, so just let it find its place. Pin all that way, all the way along, and maybe give it another press. Because it's now it's got the interlining in uh, up to that edge, to that first edge. So it's worth just pressing it again. Again, just find that first fold you've got here. Just tuck it in a little bit so it doesn't sit proud of the edge. Make sure you're not going past that fold. Pin in. most important thing is that you're staying on that original crease at the bottom because that's the one that's important. Don't worry so much about this one it, because um, this is going to be inside the blind. And I'm just going to crease that in again. Bit of steam. I've got uh, glass headed pins here which don't melt um, and they're quite long. They're like two centimetres long which again are very good for curtain making much better than sort of dress making pins easy to pick up and like i say you can't really melt them if your iron touches them okay so that's that's as far as i need to go before i get my linings ready to go on but I, all i'm going to do before i finish is i'm just going to smooth all this out making sure it's all flat and just put a, a row of pins in the top here to keep this flat because obviously I'm going to move this off the table now and it could all kind of start to twist or move about so just in the very top of the, the fabric okay. just put pins along the top here to keep that in place and that is the beginnings you know, this is the actual size of actual width of the blind. This is the bottom hem. We don't do the top until last, so you're going to leave that. Um... Okay, so before we get the linings ready, I'm just going to show you how to herringbone down the sides of the blinds because we need to attach this um, to the interlining. So again, I've got strong thread, quite a lot of it. Um, I'm going to start at the the top. You have to work backwards with herringbone. So um, I'm going to just fasten into the interlining. You can either just leave an end and backstitch twice to just lock it off, or you could just tie it on, whichever you prefer, till it's firm. And then you're going to do a backward stitch into the hem allowance, and you're going to go through the two layers of the fabric and the interlining, but not through to the back of the, the back of the blind. And your stitch is, you know, about a centimetre, it doesn't have to be too small. And you need to keep your loop of your cotton out of the way so that when you pull the thread, it crisscrosses over each other. Then you're going to go to the top of the, uh, above the hem allowance, and you're going to go into the interlining. 
a backward stitch of about a centimetre and you're going to pull the thing and then you're going to go back again again quite large they're probably about three centimetres apart these stitches and it produces like a crisscross stitch and the reason that we use this stitch is again because it holds the fabric together but it does, doesn't create pull it's um, so if you caught one of these it wouldn't all go tight like a normal uh, stitch would it stays uh, stays very flat and that's important in curtains and blinds because you don't want there to be any puckering from the right side so I've got my hand underneath so that I can feel as I'm going through that I'm not going through to the bottom layer I'm just going through the the turning and the interlining and I'm going to go all the way down it's quite quick once you get the hang of it all the way down the edge and then I'll be able to take those pins out because this hem will then be held in place um, and ready to put the lining on It's the same process with uh, the edges of curtains, except when we have curtains, we have the interlining into the edge to create a sort of thicker edge. Uh, and then you'd be going through two layers of uh, interlining and one layer of fabric to do this. But this is just one layer because we trimmed it away up to the crease line. I just need to fasten that off and just finish that bit and then that will be ready. And so you do all four, all two sides of your blind like And now that. we're going to get the linings ready. But first of all, I'm going to prepare the other blinds. I tend to do everything uh, at the same time in stages. So do all your interlinings uh, and then you do all your linings at the same time and then you're sort of making them consecutively. So I'll get the other one ready and then I will show you how to prepare the linings.